Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw curly fur in pastels. Now I'm going to take a section of the body of this cockapoo portrait that I completed earlier this year and the first thing that I want to be focusing on is my base layer. So what I'm doing here is I started off with a layer of pan pastels and I'm then just going over the top with another layer with my pastel pencils. Now what I'm trying to achieve here is a nice, soft, smooth transition between the lights and the darks. This is a really good foundation to work from for any fur, but particularly soft, curly fur. Now I do feel that if the first base layer is blended, it helps to bring that softness throughout the additional layers, which is vital for this kind of fur texture. Now if you would like to see how to draw curly fur in depth in a real time tutorial then I have this one available on my Patreon channel, I'll put a photo of that in the corner and that there goes through every single process, each layer, the pencils that I use, the techniques from start to finish. So if my Patreon with the real time tutorials is of interest I'll link that in the description below. So the first thing to start with when we work with the initial texture and building in some details is I want to be working with the curls that are closest to the skin first. Now the one thing that I like to do is work in smaller sections. So it may seem a little bit strange that I'm working on the right hand side and I'm not progressing straight from the curls that I've already worked on the left. Now the reason that I like to do this is because the space now in the center is going to gradually become smaller. So if I've got some curls on the left hand side and eventually I'm starting on the right, this whole chest area becomes less overwhelming because I'm gradually making it less of a, of a larger size that I've got to tackle at once. So by breaking it up like this, it's just one of the things that can help us mentally work through something that's like quite challenging and complex. So in terms of the layers here, the layering process is really important. You want to be building this up in gradual stages with loads of subtle layers. So here I'm not jumping to my brightest curls first and really what I'm focusing on is just getting a variety and variation in place from the beginning. So I don't want all of these curls going in the same direction. I do want them curving in different ways to help build up that realistic look. Now the other thing that I'm doing here is at stages I am going to be darkening up my base layer, here is a prime example. So as I start to build up some of those curls, if I feel like I don't have enough contrast in, I'm going to go ahead and hype that up when I notice it. I'm not going to save that for my last layers because that does end up creating more work for ourselves. So I want to be making sure that I am always refining those values as I go. Now what's also important is the layers that we apply here are never meant to completely cover the layers underneath because if that was the case there'd be no point in working with all of these layers and, and building those up in stages. So I do want all of the darker browns, those warm values that I've put in initially to still show through and act as those shadows in between the lighter groups of curls. Now the groupings of curls is something else that's important. There are no real one individual hair strand that stands out. All of the hair becomes clumped together to create that curl. So you want to be working more with your thicker pencil strokes to really replicate that in those initial stages. It doesn't just mean that we have to be putting in a load of random pencil strokes. You still want to be following that good use of pencil technique but you do want to be making sure that everything here is more clumped together rather than individual details. You can see just at the top here of the camera view that the chin hairs are individual, they're more wispy, but that's completely different to the texture that I'm trying to create here. Now fur textures is something that I do focus my real time tutorials on Patreon. I really like to focus on the pet portrait side of things for Patreon members who may like to start taking on commissions of their own. There is a wide variety of dog breeds there that helps to then transfer all of those tips and techniques into their own work. So I've got a really nice range of different breeds that show the different coat textures. And as I've said, if that is of interest, then my um, Patreon is all linked in the description below. I also do have a Patreon library on my website which lists all of the tutorials that are available there on each of the tiers so you know exactly what you're going to get before you sign up. Now the wonderful thing about Patreon is it's really flexible so you can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time. So as I continue to work through this layer here, the way that I am moving these curves with the pencil is going to help to determine the underlying bone structure. So here over this area there is the shoulder. Now the shoulder is obviously an important structure to capture. 
If I don't get the shift in the way that these curls are curving, then I'm potentially going to make the body look really flat. So although the curls are going to have a little bit more freedom of movement compared to a shorter coated dog like a Labrador, because they do have that extra coat length, you are going to end up having a little bit more of a tendency to have a shift in the way that they are directed. But they are still going to have a few main directional changes that we do want to capture. And around the shoulder blade on the chest is one of those prime examples. It might be that the curls swirl around a specific way. That there is important to make sure that we capture. Now going back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, notice how I've been working around the outer edge of this one section I decided to work on and now I'm left with one small area that has no curls and just the base layer. This has ensured that I've not become overwhelmed by the process. Now this is definitely one of the most challenging fur types to get right so if we start to then overcomplicate it because we do start to get overwhelmed we can end up missing out layers and therefore the fur does not have the same amount of depth or realism that we would like. So by working in a way that we find easier to approach, it doesn't matter what it is, but if there is a coping strategy that you have, it's definitely worth using it on any areas where you think you might become a little bit more um, challenged. And this is definitely one of the cases for me. So I like to make sure that I do break that up into small sections and now I can start working on my next layer. Because I've already mapped in the first layer of curls, this second layer and my additional processes here become a little bit quicker. Now I'm not making them quicker just so I can rush it and get it finished, but it's just because that initial mapping in process now has already been done. Once I take my time on that first layer and I'm already then in a better frame of mind, I can continue working through that portrait with the same enthusiasm that I did when I started it. Now this is something that can massively help with just staying motivated and always wanting to be creating at the easel. So as I work with this layer, I'm now building up my lighter values and reinforcing where the light catches the main groups of curls that I've mapped in. What is important here is you don't want to add highlights over every single curl. If you do that, you make all of the curls that you drew in first at the same level as the layer that we're currently working on. You want to allow some of those initial curls to stay darker to make those eventually look like the curls that are closer to the skin. So as you continue to build up your lighter layers, which again here I'm now using a different lighter value pencil, each of those layers that I'm adding on top is always reinforcing my contrast and it's going to help to make those base layers underneath look darker. Now this is something that I talk about in my Patreon tutorials. If you have a section that is light but you can't make it any lighter, let's say you've used a white pencil and you can't physically go any brighter but you do still want it to look lighter in your portrait, then something that you can do is darken up what's next to it. By darkening that up you're automatically then going to make your lighter values appear brighter. Now this is always a good thing to do anyway because again you are going to be reinforcing your contrast and the values of the artwork is what's going to make it look 3D and realistic it's not worrying about the exact colour. Now I do have a giraffe tutorial here on YouTube and obviously the real time version on Patreon and in that tutorial I am specifically talking about how to pick your pencils based on the colours that we see in the reference photo. So if that is a sort of a, an aspect of colour that you do find tricky, it doesn't matter what medium it is, it could be acrylics or oils, anything like that, colour pencils, that tutorial there would be of interest because it really does help us to isolate which colour pencils we should be using depending on the scenario that we've got. So I really hope this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I also upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week so if you would like to get notified of that content then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you do have any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And as I've mentioned, if you are interested in my step-by-step -step tutorials, then I will link my Patreon in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll be uploading another video here to YouTube next week.